So you ever dated somebody that's super good looking, but just really frustrating to deal with? Today we've got the Mammoth 75 from Wuche Studio. We've looked at Wuche stuff before, the Icky 68, the Mellatrix Zoom 65, both entry level boards. Both of those are kind of fussy, fiddly boards to build, and that made me pretty nervous because this price point is pretty far from entry level. It launched as a quick in stock, sold out super fast, and is now in group buy, ending in the next couple days with delivery slated for August. Depending on config, pricing ranges anywhere from $359 to $669 for bare bones, with most of the price difference being the bottom case. This is the aluminum mirror finish bottom, comes in at 430 US. Not surprisingly, this shares a lot of DNA with the stuff we've seen from them before. The internals are very familiar and the case itself seems to be the standout feature and what warrants most of the price tag. This is kind of a double-edged sword for Wuche because this feels like a familiar entry-level board in a fancy new case, but in fairness, they also offer a lot in terms of design and features in their entry-level boards. This is a 75% layout, but with some Wuche nods like the four-piece cluster over the arrows, the F13 key, and a knob so big it hurts my feelings. And a knob that your girl tells you not to worry about. And a knob so big it calls itself Pete Davidson. Two of them, actually. One brass and one aluminum. The design's vary based on when you get in. It's a 6.5 degree typing angle with a 19.5 millimeter front height. I really like the layout and the angle. A lot. It's an absolute monster as well. At over two kilos fully built and like 15 millimeters less wide than a TKL, it's a big boy. It's worth pointing out too that they do have the Mammoth 20, which is like the companion piece numpad if that's something that you just can't live without. Case is all aluminum and the quality of the anodizing is probably the best I've seen come through here yet. It's flawless, literally perfect, even on the inside, and you don't see that very often. The bottom is really well done. It's gorgeous, ridiculously hard to film as well. There are still visible tooling marks inside the lower, but not really a big deal. The Mammoth is a three-dimensional geometric badge that actually sticks out a fair bit from the case, but the case feet prevent it from making contact with the desk. Side profile has some nice curves and a bit of the lower case wraps around on the corners. So there's no visible hardware anywhere. The USB port is centered. It's recessed slightly and hides the majority of the connector. Due to where the case hardware is located, you'll have to be really careful to not nick the case edge with a screwdriver, especially a motorized screwdriver. On the top edge, they'll nick right where a keycap won't cover the damage. So don't be like me. Be careful. There are a slew of extras available, plates in every material, and PCB options for solderable, which supports ISO and even wireless. We have the wired hot swap version today with the polycarb plate, and like the Zoom 65 we looked at recently, this thing is loaded with pour-on foam. The majority of the foam comes pre-applied. It's not glued, but it's really sticky. I'm not crazy about this. It makes it really tough to seat the plate standoffs correctly, which we'll talk about more in just a sec. It's also difficult to remove without damaging. We still get that thin sheet that goes over the PCB, under the stabs, and the switches. It's got a pretty predictable sound similar to taping the PCB so we'll hear it with and without. We also have a daughter board here that strangely enough has the JST cable glued at both ends which is super weird. They've confirmed it will not be like this in the group by version. Outside of that there's a couple little pour on inserts in the lower over the daughter board and the weight which doubles as a battery cavity if you go for wireless. It is a gasket mount build and there's two ways to go about this. The Wuche recommended way where you use the foam on the back of the PCB and don't put gaskets on the lower frame or option two where you do the complete opposite. This is a thin PCB with flex cuts. We do have Options here for split backspace, left and right shift, and spacebar, as well as stepped caps lock with the usual warning that some switches will be north facing. There's no lighting, no per key, no underglow, just a single white indicator for caps lock. These are VIA compatible and the knob left, right, and push are reassignable. This build would be very frustrating for a novice builder. It does have that usual level of Wuche fiddliness, which is hard to swallow at a price point like this. There were a couple times during this build process where I would have been straight up pissed if I had actually paid for this board. The vast majority of that headache, surprisingly, was from following the build guide, which you should still do, but I would ignore the standoffs except for around that knob to firm up that assembly. Like I said, the foam can make it tough to see if you have them seated in the plate correctly, and the second issue comes from these little plastic screws. They're really easy to misthread and really easy to strip once you do. When, not if that happens, you're gonna have your plate and your PCB assembly basically fused into one piece. That's gonna make it really hard to get in there and mess with other configurations, tune your stabs, etc. I had to use flush cutters in a couple cases to cut the heads off those plastic screws and I scratched a couple trace routes when I did that. I've already expressed this to Wuche and they've confirmed that the Group I versions of this kit will come with metal hardware instead, which should help mitigate a lot of that headache. This is a thin PCB, so their Aurora stabs are recommended. Thankfully, they're included in the kit. I also notoriously have a hard time tuning my spacebar with these stabs, so I opted to use the little pre-cut Teflon Holy Mod stickers they include just on the spacebar. They actually work pretty well, sound and feel a lot cleaner than using cut band-aids. I wish I could tell you that was it for headaches, but the rest of the assembly also had some challenges. I couldn't get the 
K-screw under the knob to catch the thread, and there's an issue where the plate overlaps a portion of the lower K-screw by the spacebar, it's best to just run without it, and this again is something they've corrected in the Group I version. With this board, it didn't pay to be an early adopter. It also has the issue I saw in the Icky 68, where you have to really make sure the plate is situated correctly, or it sits kind of slanted in the case, and the F1 and F2 keys rub the top frame. The post on the rotary encoder fights you when you're trying to adjust it. More than a few times, I had to loosen the K-screws and make little micro adjustments to the plate until I got everything lined up perfect. This board today is outfitted with Gat Black Ink V2s, GMK Mecha 01 with a couple color matched artisans from Goth Keys and a couple really sick 3D printed caps from Capsmiths. So Muted is definitely the name of the game with this setup. All that pour on in there really has those Gat Black Ink V2s and a chokehold would probably sound better with a clackier switch. There's not a lot of flex or bounce despite running with no standoffs because there's so much foam compressed inside. It's a very comfortable typing experience though. Bottom out feels really soft. It's mostly a good sound. It's low and muted with the pop you usually get from taping the back of the PCB. The space bar is definitely the low point for me here. How I have it set up in this build just feels pretty lifeless. Running with the lower gaskets and no rear foam is just a flex monster setup. Look at all this flex, and you can't feel that bounce if you type heavy handed. I do hear more hollowness coming in, and you could mediate or shape some of that with some polyfill, but I really like the sound of the alphas and the spacebar more in this configuration. The other mods sound kind of weird to me. Backspace changes a lot depending on where you strike it. Of course, sound is really subjective, and I could definitely see how someone would prefer either one of these. I did decide to go back and remove the PE sheet, which I usually just install on Wuche stuff and forget about it because you basically have to disassemble the entire board and start fresh. And I'm glad I did because the full gasket method with that PE sheet pulled is probably my favorite setup. It is higher pitched overall, but the mods sound better to me, and I actually enjoy the spacebar, which was a weak point for me in both setups. The big takeaway here is that there's a pretty wide swing in the typing experience and the acoustics, depending on the setup, and the kit comes with everything you need to tailor it to your liking, so you are getting some variety and plenty of room to experiment. I have a hard time with this board. I love the layout, and the visuals are absolutely insane. The quality on the case is really nice, and I did after a lot of frustration, come away with a board that I'm really happy with. But to me, this board is really for an enthusiast, someone who doesn't mind spending a few hundred dollars and then tweaking and tweaking on it to really dial it into their tastes. I would not say this is a beginner-friendly board, and I would not recommend it for a beginner. The 75% market is pretty sparse outside the numerous satisfaction clones, so I can't see how this would be attractive. But if this was my first big spend in customs, like if this was a big budgetary sacrifice for me to spend this much, it would turn me off on the hobby. On something like the Icky 68, I can overlook some of these opportunities, but at this price point, I can't. Hopefully by the time the group buy boards arrive, they've corrected some of the issues that we talked about earlier in the video, but reviewing the board in front of me today, I can't emphatically recommend this. I can cautiously recommend it for those with lots of money, skill, free time, and patience to really make the most of it. If you want to check out some keyboard builds that are more appropriate for a beginner, you can do that right here. I know it's been really keyboard heavy lately, but we're in the process of a move. As soon as we get settled, we'll be back to the same well-rounded peripheral content that you're used to. That's it for today. I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.